kind of like a rally car. Uh, he's coming full steam, uh, and his back end has started to drift out into my lane. Now here's the fun part. So as I already begin to start committing to the turn, I see him start to kick out, kick out, kick out. His back tire catches, pow, now he's flipping. So let me give you the, the distance. So um, I'm turning in. The car is about, for me, this gentleman right here, as it begins to flip towards me, uh, barrel rolling. All right, the people behind me, by the way. Okay, so I see what's happening. Now my little go to the left doesn't, this is not time for that. Um, <clears throat> go out to the side, far as I can, uh, hold the edge, wait till he flips by a little bit, turn in very, I had to seriously commit to the turn at that point, because like I said, now I'm three, point, <laughs> three feet away from the treetops. Okay, so I cut it in really, really hard. Um, works, I get around him. Uh, it flips, stops on its side, the guys crawl out of the top, and so then I stop to make sure they're okay. Now what ends up happening is uh, the people who are riding behind me pull up and they're looking at me, they're all white faced with their eyes really big because they fully assumed that I was going to die um, in that situation, it was going to go bad. And, um, and honestly enough, I was not worried or scared when that was going down. So it wasn't until uh, that night when I was laying back in the cabin um, and I was going back through the events of the day that I compared uh, that four year span. I thought about the fact that that very first ride I took with these guys, I took a left, there was no obstruction in the road. I was going, you know, similar speeds or what have you, and I blew off the side of the road. Um, you advance four years, same kind of a turn, except this time it's an even tighter turn, and now there's a truck flipping at me at the same, you know, a car flipping at me at the same time. Um, and so as I contrasted these, I started thinking, okay, what was different? Um, what in me was different that allowed me to survive? Because had you transported the, the squid Kermit uh, to the ninja Kermit, because I'm the ninja rider, by the way, is what I go by. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know, Kawasaki sport bikes are referred to as ninjas, and so I'm a ninja rider. All right, so uh, how I graduated from squid to ninja rider. So I started thinking about this, and it really um, brought me back to the track and start understanding, well, what did I learn at the track? Part of what I learned is to look past um, the tangible, so to speak, uh, and look much more to um, the universal. So let me say it this way, uh, another analogy, a maze. Imagine uh, instead of a maze for rats, it was a human-sized ma uh, maze labyrinth of sorts. Everybody follow me on this? <coughs> you imagine you being a person walking through a large maze. Okay. Now, uh, if, provided there was an out, imagining it would take you probably some time to find your way out of such a thing. Yes? Can we imagine this? All right. Now imagine that separate circumstance, you're in a maze, but you simultaneously have a bird's eye view. You can see the top of the situation while you're in it at the same time. Imagine that. Which situation would allow you to navigate best? I'm asking you. Okay, the one with the bird's eye view, yes? Okay, so the easiest way to explain it is to say that when I approach a turn now, as opposed to coming to a track, um, as, excuse me, from being on the track, when I approach a turn now, I can separate it out. So during my squid days, I would see the car, the pole, the tree, the, you know, the little patch. These things worry me. I get nervous. Uh, I'd be scared going through this so forth. Um, now I can remove all those things. I can just see the road. Um, and then I can think, all right, what's the best line through here? And then what I can do is put those things back and then think, all right, now what's the best line given that it's a little bit hampered? And that's what I did when that truck was flipping. All that happened was I saw, okay, if I turn there instead of here, it'll require a little bit more lean angle, but I'll be able to get around him. So I stopped looking at the truck altogether. I stopped thinking about the trees altogether because they were going to be there whether I thought about them or not, right? Um, and I, I would definitely know about them if I missed the turn. So, <laughs> so, uh, so what ends up happening is I simply focus on what it is that I know I can do um, and what it is that I've done on multiple occasions. Um, we end up calling this faith by the way. So um, what ends up happening is uh, I have the faith in my abilities, motorcycle skills, all this kind of good stuff, to go around and doesn't end up bothering me. Okay, full stop. This is the motorcycle part. Now, how this translates to uh, life being God's motorcycle works out like this. Now, I don't have time now to fully work this out, but what I, what I will do, again, is give you the overview, hope it sparks enough interest for you to read the finished uh, product as I'm working towards it. So it works something like this. Um, I was... The first difficulty would be, remember when I talked to you about uh, particulars and universals? Remember this? All right. The first difficulty is that when folks think about God, uh, unfortunately they think in terms of particulars, like doctrines or churches or specific people's actions, right? Uh, this is what ends up, and then when most folks reject the notion, they are rejecting the same thing. Uh, they are rejecting 
people who have told them bad stuff or said interesting things or uh, pushed their ideas or their doctrines on. But remember what I said about the universal. Um, each person has to come into contact and understand the universal, particularly um, in your own experience in order to get a feel for it. Um, you can't have someone else tell it to you and it work out. Uh, when I blew off the turn, you know, during my squid days, they told me exactly what I could have done to not do that. But the next day, had the same thing happen, I would have done the same thing again. Um, it required some time. It required me to becoming uh, more acquainted with the underlying ideas that you don't learn in a class, that you don't learn when somebody just says, hey, when you let the clutch out and you turn it, be easy because, well, these are things that get you in the door, right? But when you really want to start learning. So what ends up happening is I have a significantly traumatic life experience, which I'll spare you the details of now, but like I said, it's in the, in the full write-up. And while I was going through it, um, this came to my attention, and what God says to me is this. All right, uh, understand life is my motorcycle, and what do you tell people, Kermit, when they're getting on your motorcycle? And so I think about this, and most likely you do the same thing. If you've ever given someone a ride on the back of your motorcycle, what do you tell them? You say, hey, look, I got, I'm in control of this, okay? You be neutral. You don't help me, you don't hurt me. You don't try to help me lean into the turn or you'll wreck us. Uh, and you definitely don't try to climb off the high side while I'm leaning into the turn. Um, or you may call, give us another problem, right? And every time somebody in the back moves, you have to make a correction for it. Every time they do something, right? Especially when they don't know that they're putting inputs into the bike. All right, so then I start thinking, yeah, all right, well, if the metaphor works this way, then I'm the passenger. I have to learn how to better not put negative inputs into the bike. And so uh, as I'm thinking about this, it grows a little bit further. So when you think about relationships, your interactions with other people, because if there's any way folks are going to know about the universal and your relationship with God and all this kind of stuff, it happens when you're interacting with other people. Um, quite often, we don't pay attention to our inputs and we'll blame other things like the other person. Um, just like when you're on a bike and you don't know that you told it to throw you down the road, um, like I did at the track. I mean, I gave my ninja specific instructions to throw me down the road at 120 miles an hour. I just didn't know that at the time. Um, well, understanding that approach uh, when you're interacting with people ends up working the same way. When we were talking yesterday, you talked about energy, for instance, right? When you go into a room noticing different energies, um, trying to get a feel for what's happening. And then you said, okay, uh, experience has taught me that this energy means something, but you didn't go running over to the negative energy um, because bad things happen, right? These are things you end up learning. Um, learning how then you interact uh, with other people involves the same kind of process. You pay attention to particulars but what you're really learning are universals. Let me give you another uh, explanation of that, and then I'm going to stop. Uh, or actually, I'm going to show some pictures. Uh, another explanation works like this. Let's take uh, intimate relationships. Sure. Uh, intimate relationships. So when I was younger, um, I'm not that old now, but when I was younger, I'm in a relationship with a young woman who I feel like everything she's saying is bad about me is her fault. All right? And so then I move away from this particular area, move to a new area. I'm in a new relationship, and this new person ends up saying the same things about me that the other person was saying. And so the, and, and my initial attempt was to blame her too, right? Oh, no, that's your fault. But as I begin to think about it more, I start realizing, no, 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 it's me. I'm replicating this. I'm not understanding the inputs I'm putting into God's motorcycle. I'm not understanding how it is that I'm working this thing out. Um, and so I need to do a better job of that. All right, so that's pretty much where I'm going with it. So uh, thank you all for listening. And um, I'm going to show you a few pictures before we finish it up. Can you? Yeah, oh, wow, it's up already. Can you, somebody hit the uh, dim the... These are a bit out of order because um, I didn't plan it very well. But at any rate, <coughs> this is a picture of my track bike as I was going into it, fixing a few things. Click it. Oh, yeah, that's a picture of me uh, after I'm, I'm making a transition from my, I have sport bikes still, but this is a Kawasaki Versus uh, 650 parallel twin. I very much enjoy riding that. Um, this is me doing its first oil change. Oh, yeah, there's me at the track. Just to show you, again, this is kind of a solitary thing. I pack up pull all my stuff on the back of the track, I mean, excuse me, on the back of the truck, take it out, get, uh, there's a tent there, all that kind of good stuff. Go ahead, click it. There's me uh, making it happen at the track. And now you can get a feel for how it is that I got around that flipping truck. Um, I was straight up at first, and then by the time, I was in a one piece at the time, by the time he flipped past me, I was about on my knee <laughs> getting around him. Oh yeah, that's me at, the, um, at, my, at school on my Versus. I think that's it, is it? No, uh, that's me and this gentleman right here, um, who you'll hear from a bit. Uh, later, or actually now. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Kermit. Next time I whip out my own crash story at a bar, I will never feel I will ever impress anybody after hearing his. <laughs> uh, maybe we can all just adopt yours, 
So then the Subaru comes down the road flipping, 